So why is FCL shipping important? Starting with the basics, shipping cargo and containers help shelter goods from the elements. The practice of containerized shipping helps standardize freight shipping by keeping costs relatively low. Containerization has also made it easier to move goods globally in via multiple modes of transportation, whether by steamships, trucks, or even trains. Containers are also uniquely coded, which makes it easier to track the movement of goods from start to finish. Let's check out some examples of goods that are well suited for being shipped via FCL. Bulk non-perishable foodstuffs like canned goods are usually low margin and require the lowest cost option for moving an FCL usually serves as the lowest cost option. Higher margin commodities such as consumer electronics are also well suited for FCL movement. Furniture's margin would quickly evaporate if moved by air due to the size and weight of the cargo. Clothing is well suited when it is being shipped as stock replenishment. Goods with large batch size, such as component goods used in manufacturing, are also particularly well suited to being shipped FCL due to the volume agnostic rate structure standard steamship lines employ. Here are some additional benefits of FCL shipping. FCL offers a reliable schedule but slow overall transit time, especially in comparison to air, but usually has the steadiest service. Faster ocean shipping than LCL since the cargo and an FCL shipment is owned by one party. There is less potential for damage in FCL because there are less handoffs in the shipment journey. And in more recent history of ocean shipping, ocean carriers now offer premium services for FCL shipments that may need extra care or expedited transit. Now that we have insight into what FCL is and why it's important, let's check out the FCL journey in play. The first phase of the FCL shipment is the booking phase. Just like when you want to make a dinner reservation, booking cargo on a ship is essentially reserving space for a container on an ocean vessel in advance. At this initial phase of the FCL life cycle, we should know the following. What commodity is being shipped? What container size is needed for the cargo? How many containers are needed? Where the cargo will be shipped to and from? This information is usually provided to the freight forwarder by the shipper. And of course, when the cargo will be ready for pickup at the factory. These pieces of information and other customer requirements or preferences are used to determine which vessel schedule is appropriate to book. Next, the carrier would determine if there is enough space on the vessel to accept the booking, similar to when the restaurant confirms your dinner reservation. Assuming there is space available on the vessel, the ocean carrier would then provide a shipping order or booking confirmation back to the freight forwarder, who will then provide it to the shipper in order to proceed with moving of the shipment. The next phase is loading the container and gate in of the container at the terminal before departure from port. Trucking becomes a component in this phase, as a trucker is needed to pick up an empty container from the port. Then the trucker will transport the empty container from the port to the factory. At the factory, the empty container will then be loaded with the cargo. Once the container is fully loaded at the factory, a trucker then brings up the full container back to the port for the container to gate in. It is then ready to onboard the ocean vessel for departure. Before the shipment actually departs from the origin port, there is documentation that needs to be validated for export purposes before departure. During this phase, the shipper will typically submit documentation to the freight forwarder about the shipment cargo. The freight forwarder will use this documentation to 1. Clear the export customs 2. Begin the import process with the destination country 3. Draft the house bill of lading, also known as the HBL and 4. Submit required information to the ocean carrier prior to the deadline listed on the shipping order or booking confirmation. Once the ocean carrier receives the information from the freight forwarder, they will use it to 1. Complete customs requirements 2. Manage gate in operations 3. Mitigate the risk of undeclared dangerous goods and 4. Help distribute weight and cargo safety across the ship. This documentation phase must be completed accurately and on time in order for the cargo to load on board the vessel and begin the journey on the water. 
Now that the container is on the water, let's talk a little bit about the route the vessel will take. Vessels follow a predetermined set of ports similar to a bus route called a string or service. These strings are operated by ocean carriers like ONE, Maersk, Evergreen, Yangming, Costco, just to name a few. Typically, when the vessel is about a week to a few days out from destination, the ocean carrier will send the forwarder information or documentation required for the forwarder to clear customs, pick the container up from the port, or let them know what they owe the ocean carrier for the services rendered. For a U.S. import, all of this information typically comes on a document called an arrival notice. Now that we're in the home stretch of the FCL shipment journey, as the vessel has arrived and docked at the destination port. Similar to the beginning of the shipment journey, a trucker is involved again to help transport the container once it has offloaded from the ship. Before the container is picked up by the trucker, a few items must be cleared for pickup. Import customs clearance, freight charges cleared to the ocean carrier, and the trucker must have a delivery order that allows the container to be released to them on behalf of the owner of the goods. With those three key items in mind, it is also important to note that there is a set time frame for how many free days a container can sit at a port to wait for a trucker to pick up before demerge incurs. If a trucker fails to recover a container within the free period of time, the container will incur demerge charges owed to either the terminal, the carrier, or both. Thus, it is important for a freight forwarder to have import documents cleared and truckers dispatched in time to prevent these charges. Once everything is cleared from the container pickup from port, we can get the container to its final destination. The trucker can now recover the container from the arrival port and bring it to its final destination where it will be unloaded by the customer. This may occur on the spot as a live unload or be dropped in pick where the trucker may leave the container full and come back to pick it up later once it has been unloaded. It is important to note that carrier expect their containers back by a specific date. If the customer takes too long and does not return the container prior to that date, they will incur a penalty charge per day called detention. When finally unloaded and empty, the trucker will return the empty container back to the port where it will wait for a re-export in another journey somewhere in the world.